righty. So, um, Mr. James Olin, game director. That's correct. Explain to the folks who are watching what does that mean to us and why should we care? Or you know, what are you what are you in charge of with the game? Um, well, game director is kind of a fancy title for the lead designer. Um, I basically lead up the design and art teams and the sound teams, and. Uh, decide the vision for the game. Like at the beginning of the game, back in 2006, it was all about design documents and figuring out what we're going to make. Um, and then essentially throughout the years, I'm shepherding the vision and then making adjustments to the vision as we get the game to a place where you can play it and you can get playtest feedback. Um, at this point, um, I'm taking all the feedback that we get from the community, from any source uh, in the game, and then compiling that and deciding, hey, what is our going to strategy, our long-term strategy going to be for this year and the next year? I'm not really um, not so much into the details now. I have a lot of really strong uh, lead designers in Daniel Erickson and Emmanuel Lusinski and Damien Schubert and Georg Zoller and Gabe Amadantel. All those guys are involved in different sections of the game. Brad Prince. And those guys uh, really take the vision and then um, come up with all the details and figure out how they're going to uh, make that vision. Um, Excellent. Um, obviously, the big push here is 1.2, adding the legacy system. I know that you know, legacy was really important to you, something you really wanted to have in here. Um, what are some of the highlights you just want to share with folks, let them know, you know what they can expect soon? So, uh, game update 2, it's, I would say it's probably the biggest game update, free game update that you've ever seen in a subscription MMO. I'm going to go as far to say that. It's huge. Absolutely huge. You get an operation, uh, you get a flashpoint, a brand new PvP war zone. Um, a lot of those are on the brand new planet of Denova. You get uh, a whole bunch of uh, level 50 content for single players. You also get a bunch of systems. Obviously the legacy system is central, but then we also have uh, guild banks for guildies. We also have changes to the galactic trade network, so you actually have a full search. We have uh, UI customization that allows you to customize how you want to play the game and the UI itself. And then we have thousands of bug fixes, mostly the bugs that we weren't going to do in weekly patches because they were medium or lower in priority. So they're more polished bugs, but we've done all those bugs through levels 1 to 50. And then there's just there's so many different changes in the game. It's um, We have a video that uh, sh you can go to our site and see it, and it shows um, all the different changes we have there. And if you look at, if you're on the public test server and go through the patch notes, they're pages and pages long. So it really is impressive. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I, being a fan site, we, we were offered the opportunity to find a team of people to carry over to the test server, our 50s, so we could check content out. Uh, we did that. First thing I noticed immediately was how much sharper everything looked. And what I mean is, I play a Jedi Counselor um, using one of the robes we get from Corellia. You know, it's got a lot of bits and bobs on it. And I noticed immediately I was seeing details I have never seen in my costume before. So, um, yeah, yeah, tons and tons and tons of stuff. He's just kind of highlighting, covering. The, it, it's it's impressive the scope of things that you have in there. Um, but really, I mean, everybody browbeats you with uh, you know highfalutin questions. I just got a couple of silly ones for you here now uh, because folks who've been watching the videos have been seeing all the breakdown of everything that's going on. So, you as a player, forget that you're you know the game designer for the game for a moment. But you as a player, when you play, what's the content in the game you enjoy partaking of the most? Uh, well, I really enjoy the level up game. I like the class uh, class story content. That's probably my favorite stuff. The flashpoints I also really enjoy. The story heavy flashpoints. So that's that's my favorite stuff. Though I did really, I wasn't thinking that I was going to get into PvP, but I am a big fan of the war zones as well. Yeah, I I did a little war zones in beta. Um, I have yet to step into a war zone in live. And being a sage. I have the pressure being put on me to get into a war zone, and, and I'll be honest, you guys did something very clever in this legacy that makes me want to go PvP. It was that whole section of unarmed brawling skills that you need Valor rank for. Oh, yeah. I may have to go get Valor rank just so I can have that, so I can mess with my friends while we're waiting for ops to start. Um, what class, I mean, I obviously, I'm sure you've touched all the classes, but do you have like your favorite play style, your favorite class you gravitate towards now? Oh, the Sith Warrior, because Darth Vader's always been my favorite character, so I um, I like that play style as well. The tank is pretty fun. Obviously, it, you see a lot of, I see a lot of goofy things, I see a lot of silly things. What would be, I don't want to say stupid, but what's the silliest or dumbest thing you have probably run across playing the game in the live environment since it's launched? The silliest thing, that's a tough question. It, 
got nothing for me? All right, fair enough. Um, I would be remiss. I, I, I know they're down the road, but I would like to reemphasize because when me, you and I first met a year ago, I brought this up to you. Um, we need some mini games. We need some social stuff to do when I log in. So it's not all adventure all the time. I'm yeah. really looking for excuses to hang out in Carrick and uh, heckle in general and, you know, just lounge about. So um, I hear that those things are designed and coming at some point down the road when more of the features are, are coming. Is that correct? Well, we have lots of designs for yeah. lots of different systems. So there's, yeah, I'd love to see Pazak and Sabak and yeah. uh, Star Wars Chess, which I think is called Dejarek. Dejarek, Dejarek yeah. yeah. I'd love to see all those things in the game but you know, I'm not going to promise them anytime soon. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, anything you want to tell the players besides 1.2? Like, you know, I, let me put it this way. I get a lot of feedback, and the feedback I got from players when I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to be going to PAX. I'm going to get a chance to interview folks. People just wanted me to pass on how much they're enjoying the game. I mean, everyone's got little gripes and complaints, but people are really happy they're making their home here in the Old Republic. I guess the only thing I'd like to say is that we're intending to continue supporting the game in a big way. So update two is huge, but it's not our biggest update. So we have bigger ones coming. I know that sounds impossible, but wait till you see what we have coming later in the year. It's pretty exciting, so. Fair enough. Oh, I know, before we go, because you have hinted and implied, there is a secret uh, secret uh, program in place, something to do with space, that's all we know. Um, Mike, only question to you is with perhaps changes or new content with space down the road, people who enjoy the space game as it is now, are, uh, do we have to worry about the game style changing or that going away? Um, you know, I really have enjoyed the structured presented battles. It feels very Star Wars. It's kind of Roman space for me it gets boring very quickly. I know a lot of folks who are like, I don't know about space, and now that they're in the game, they really enjoy it. Do they have anything to worry about? No, they don't have anything to worry about. Whatever we do with space is going to be additive, not taking away from what we currently have. Excellent. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, James Olin, you have no idea how busy he is. He literally just showed up, and I grabbed him. So there you go. James, thank you. Thank you. I